All right, guys, so now we are in our fourth project, more modeling with curves. And I have set up my work environment where I brought in the photo of our project in the front view plane. And um, let's just go at it, okay? So let's also make some assumptions on the scale here. I'm gonna assume that this isn't like a five inch diameter base, maybe four inch tall. So let's just start with that and then use that as our guide to making the rest of this lamp. So let's go here. I'm going to go to 0, and then 2.5, and then 4 inches tall. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it looks pretty close. So I'm going to scale this photo also at this point just to help me as a reference. So I'm going to go from here. Hold down shift somewhere here and go four. So that get, kind of gets me close to my four inch uh, base. Okay. So let's go ahead and put these arms up. Let me see. I'll just put a I'll put a line somewhere here. Roughly should be this tall. Hmm. Um, let me make a center line here. I think it will help me. And then let's assume that this is like one inch wide. So I'll make another line. Let me see if it can let me do. So this is both sides. Nope. Actually, I'm going to do an offset. The distance is going to be 0.5. Offset it that way. Offset it this way. Yeah, it's about, it's about the thickness I want, I think. Maybe a little chunky, but I think I can live with that. Let's take a look at 3D if my lines are funky. Oh, my lines are good. It's just this line is pushed way far back off of the off of my zero plane, and this one is kind of stuck to the face of my um, um, object. So, and that's why I think it's making that circle uh, snap to like crazy points in space. So let's not do that. I'll just kind of use this, make a circle, and let me get rid of that. I'm going to trim. Using this guy, that guy, and then that guy. So now I have these items here. I am going to also connect the bottom. Select that curve. And if they're all touching each other, they should join up. So I'm going to hit join or control J. And sure enough, yeah, it's all joined up. Okay. So now I could actually extrude curve. And let's go 0.25. Actually, I'm going to go thinner than that. Let's go to 0.125. Okay. And if I go to top view, this guy is sitting. Oops, wrong software again. I'm using the software key or the keyboard. So that kind of collides in here and it actually takes away a chunk from the base. Right? So let's try to be accurate. This demo is going to be a little bit long because I'm going to take my time and trying to get it as accurate as possible. So in this case here, I am, oh, okay. When I extruded it, I guess I didn't have solid, so it's okay. I'm going to just go to cap. And it didn't do that. Hmm, what's going on? Oh, because it didn't do the bottom. 
know what? I'm going to delete that. And it's because my line wasn't connected. But no worries. Connect it. Join those together. Then extrude curve 0.125. Oh, I should have put cap. Let me go and do. Working too fast. We're going to say solid, yes. 0.125. There we go. Go back to the top. So what we want to do is we want to take out this chunk from this base, but not erase this because obviously we need it for the for the arm. So um, we're going to go to Boolean Difference. We're going to subtract from here. And we're going to subtract with this guy. And then we're not going to delete and put. So what happens now is that you get a nice little recessed chunk on that base. And in hindsight, I should have done it all together after I mirrored it on the other side. So let's do this so that I don't have to mirror, model both sides. I'm going to draw a line. So this will be another good example from zero. And I'm going to just go, just going to draw a big old line. And then I'm going to trim using this line, my curve. I'm going to trim off that object. And this is where truly the power of Rhino, their trimming of surfaces and solid is really like second to none. So that way, <clears throat> and it even did it with the line that was crooked. So anyway, uh, so that way I just model one side and I'm going to mirror it off of that same line. Um, okay. So let's go back to the front again. So I kind of have that. Let's kind of do this arm here, which is really the same version of this. And actually, let's start to layer this thing. So I'm going to take this object here, my extrusion, shift, pick both of those extrusion, and put it on layer one. And it's red. And then my default will keep all my lines and things like that. And I will, I will model on layer one. <clears throat> so anyway. So if I take this, and if I lock that, then it won't select all these other stuff. And I'm going to hold down Alt, copy, and I'll rotate it. And let me see. Control Shift to select all those faces. Hmm. Actually, you know what? Because I want to rotate it straight. I'm going to rotate it here first, control shift, and make this thing as long as I need it to be. I'll make a copy of it, just in case I didn't like the shape or whatever. I don't have to re-rotate it back. Mm, it should be a little bit longer. Again, if you guys draw and measure these things, it'll, it'll obviously save save yourself a lot of trouble. Oh, and then I'm going to need one up here too, so I'll make a copy of this guy. Is it me or is that thinner? It seems like that's a little bit thinner, these arms. So I'll adjust these guys in a second. But anyway, do that. Gonna get it to where I want it to go. So that'll be this arm. Alright, now I'm getting lazy. I'm not gonna make it thinner. And no. It's gonna do that.
right? And then we'll just cut this one down. Let's see if I could. Okay, so we're going to try to move it along this line, but you see my X, Y axis. So I'm going to click here. And then we're going to say align to object, which is a handy dandy trick, but it didn't quite align it. It should have. Mm. Yeah, it should have. It should have aligned it to here, but I think I could also do this. I can relocate gumball. Click there and then click there and then perpendicular. So that's a nice handy trick so that I could adjust it to the size that I need it to be. So that's good. I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. And then we'll just live with that. Okay. Good. Boy, that was already 10 minutes. Uh, I'd like to detail this guy out now. So again, because I like to model in 90 degrees, I'm going to oops, make a copy of this guy. And let's go 90 degrees. So I'm just going to make this base here. I'm pretending like this guy is kind of rotated flat. So I can use this as a base to create this guy here let me make some lines so I'm just kind of drawing lines that represents kind of these edges here and I'm going to offset uh, point one maybe So that'll be the thickness of the um, thickness of these bars, but maybe it's too thick already. Maybe it should be about there. Since I have the center line here, I can go mirror. Mirror to this guy. So that gives me these two thickness thingamajiggers. I'm going to go ahead and close that loop. And of course, I'm just using this as a guide. I'm actually just making this base. So you'll see what I'm doing here. I'm going to go to mirror. And it seems like that's like a, an inch or so or a thickness of this. So I'm going to just eyeball it. I think it should be somewhere here. Let me move. Oop, unlock this. Drawing over here so I can see. Lock. Okay, so that also has a little thickness, so let me do another line somewhere here. And then there's this arc that is happening, and let's just say the arc ends somewhere here. And so that I could stay geometrically solid, I'm going to mirror this. So be like that. Say maybe I'll give myself a line here for my arc. Okay. So it's a subtle arc, so maybe it'll be something like that. Yeah, I'm good with that. Let me offset that. Uh, 0.75. I don't know. Looks good to me. Perpendicular. Perpendicular. Okay, so now I start to trim. Maybe I'll go fill it. Oops. I'm going spacebar to go back into the fillet command because now fillet is done. Spacebar. So I have that arc there. And then let me 
go to fill it here. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, it's good that we're making all these errors. So you see how they're like not on the same plane. So there's a good trick to kind of remedy this. And this is probably one of the most important commands because as you start modeling, you will forget to kind of set a construction plane and then you'll be drawing in 3D space but you actually want them to be flat. So hopefully you guys won't forget this command, but I use it all the time because I make this type of mistake all the time. It's called set point. And I can select all my objects like that. Actually, I'm going to window it. Right? So you can see they're in different planes here. So I say click, I say OK. And then I'm going to align it to my red is the X and my green is the Y. So I'm going to align it to my Y. And there you go. Push enter. So now it's, hey, I'm such a liar. Hold on. I'm pretty sure it works. Yep. And then I just kind of drag it out to establish it and, you know, whatever. So now that's all flat. So that's a really, really handy tool. Please don't forget it because it will happen to you guys just like the way you saw it on this particular demo. So now I should be able to fill it that. No problem. Fill it these guys. Fill it that. Okay, so I have these guys which I'm going to join control J and then I have this guy control J so now these are polylines remember which means that I can extrude and so this looks like it's extruding like four or five inches or if this was I forget I forget that was five inches so I'm gonna go five inches um, so I'm gonna extrude curve these two guys five inches so now if I come here so there's that piece right and then I'm gonna bully on them both so that I don't get this little funky overlap right here So now that's all one piece. Now the surface is divided here, but it'll render clean because it's what we call a coplanar surface or or it's, a, it's all one continuous surface. So don't let that little bot line bother you guys. Uh, there's other tools to get rid of it visually, but uh, I don't think it should let it, don't let it get, bother you, basically. Okay, uh, let me see here. So I'm going to keep these kind of objects off to the side so that, you know, in case I need to edit it, I can edit it straight up and down instead of trying to edit it at an angle. And then I'm going to take my poly surface here and Alt and bring this in. And then I'm going to move. Let's get accurate here. I'm going to move this sucker right to this point. And then I'm going to rotate. And this time I'm going to go to the rotate command because I want some more controls here. Uh, center rotation is going to be here. And then my first angle is going to be here. And it's going to rotate to there. And so that way I can get it perfectly rotated. So there is that model. And I'm sure it's not lined up from the top. So let me see. So in the Tizio lamp, the bottom is on the outside, and then this arm slightly on the inside. So I'm going to come here. And I'm going to move it. Gosh, I forgot what how much it was. Was it 0.1? No, I think it was 0.125. That's okay. I'm just going to do that. So there should be a little gap there anyway. Let 
Is that right? No, I moved the wrong object. That's the one. So now I'm going to take the time, go 0.125. It's just we're trying to figure out which one to move is, is the skill set. Okay, so that's good. I'm pretty happy with that. And then the upper arm is even inside of that one. So let's go here, come up here, zoom out, take that upper arm, come here, move it in. Slide it back. Make sure we leave a little gap. So there you go. Okay. So we're getting there, guys. Be patient. It's been about 20 minutes. Tell you what, I'm going to take a break, or I'm going to let you guys have a break and start the video on the next part two.